So with it being the one year anniversary, I wanted to go ahead and jump into a comprehensive beginner guide for Dragon Quest The Adventures of Die, A Hero's Bond. Um, this game is again, one year old. Again, Dragon Quest The Adventures of Die, A Hero's Bond is the name of the game. Um, and I want to go ahead and touch on everything that you guys need to know about this game and help you guys get started strong. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. Hit that thumbs up and subscribe. And let's go ahead and jump in. So the general premise is this game is centered around your character. You see my character right there in the center with the shield and all that. The game's centered around your own custom character. They are the luminary leader. They are a, the hero of this world, basically. And ultimately what happens is to defeat their antagonist, they summon out different and, and through resonance they bring i don't want to say summon because that has a different connotation for what you would see from a gotcha game but they bring other allies to this world um with pinky and stuff like that as you play the game you'll understand but they bring allies to this world from the dragon quest timeline and different points specifically like if i were to go here and show you all the dies we have the dermaline uh die we have romos we have Bengarna, we have different dyes for different this is uh they also have <laughs> you know uh seasonal outfits he's in this uh this was from like easter or whatever but yeah the, the different characters from different points in the timeline are able to join you and you know join your parties each of them will have their own skills things like that but again it's more or less the idea here now i'm showing you all these characters to also segue into the next point that you don't actually summon for your characters in this game that's why i needed to change that terminology this game is not centered around summoning for characters this is a gotcha game that is based on summoning for equipment as you see here now uh three and four star weapons will have skills tied to them and there's going to be a, a little bit of a di dichotomy between them we'll talk about it a little bit later when we get to that portion of the video but as you summon you will get these skills tied to those but that's not the only thing on these banners these banners also will feature equipment uh not just the weapon but the actual like you know clothing and, and shields or whatever the case is and each of these items will have different things that are available to them so it can it can seem and feel like it's a lot trust me um i understand if that's your first impression is like oh wait i need to summon for all these things and stuff like that so one thing i'll say is there is not a set bonus uh there's no bonus for having the the legs and the top and having the entire set that they're giving you at one time uh if there was that would be kind of annoying but as far as i can tell there has never been anything like that but what i will say is these also as you see have different traits so depending on what you do uh you're going to get a lot of different outfit pieces again whether it's the tops bottoms weapons or shields you're going to get a lot of different out outfit pieces and you'll be able to mix and match but you want to obviously stay true to what you're trying to build based around the weapons and the skills that you're doing and also the content you need to complete because different content will have different requirements for uh you know different uh elements right so we see this chart here some bosses are going to be weak to slash and then really really resistant to the other groupings right so you need to have slash based stuff on or just or uh equipment that has traits that improve your your slash damage or things like that right so that's basically what the game is centered on uh i want to also really quickly before we move on uh talk about the other gotchas that are here so these are souls and souls are basically an extension and every character can have three souls equipped to them and really when it comes down to it you have soul types and they, they resonate and you get bigger bonuses and stuff like that you'll have to kind of really dive into this mechanic for yourself and really kind of understand it it's very easy to understand but what i will say is don't worry about these initially try to worry about getting your your characters built up leveled up we'll talk about that next don't worry uh and worry about getting stronger weapons with stronger skills to begin um and that's pretty much what you want to do now sometimes they do host giveaways on twitter or whatever so they recently did a campaign on twitter where they were giving out the zap strash and the uh sword that coincides with that for die i don't know if you would log in right now and get that in your presence box but as, assuming you create a new account but if you log in now you've been playing for a while it should definitely be there that being said let's go ahead and talk about character progression so they added a couple of things recently that we're going to talk about but let's go ahead and go to change equipment and i'll show you guys my party currently so you see right here uh this is my main character your main character can have different jobs or vocations and all of these different um different vocations have different levels as you see and ultimately uh like i said this game has a lot of similarities to other games in the market but ultimately as you go ahead and proceed with these boards you do get a higher level cap so let me show you an example so if I go to the bonding halo and we go to his vocation board, this uh, is, I don't wonder if it's going to show me all these. Okay. I just switched devices. So it needs to show me these. Okay. So this panel uh, page here 
is basically a way to unlock additional skills or to limit break your character uh, and stuff like that. So this is what I mean by character progression, because what's going to happen is you start off with a vocation. They're going to get capped at level 10. I'll show you guys how to level up to level 10 in the first place. We'll get to that in a second. And then you need to come here and unlock some of these nodes. And then you'll hit these ones that increase your maximum level, right? So you're going to want to be able to do that, obviously. So go in here and kind of key in on what you want to do. Now, to explain the vocations, I need to do that briefly. Let's go ahead and come here. So they have descriptions, right? Um, if I were to recommend a new player to start with any, it would probably be Sage and Warrior. Uh, because I think you get the most bang for your buck out of those two hero is really good It's my main one. I need to really switch to warrior though uh, But the reason why hero is good is because they're a jack-of-all-trades as you see they're all arounders decent defense and offense Warriors excel in offense and they they hit really 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 hard and Sages are interesting because they're also uh, they're basically like the hero grouping of magic casters and what that's important about is they have the mechanic to allow them to switch typings to where they prioritize healing or they prioritize damage they're just kind of if you if you know the lore of the series they're the next step up right you have priests and you have mages and then you have sages which are like as you would imagine more powerful beings so typically i would recommend those two hero isn't bad mage and priest aren't bad martial artist i i don't have a lot of experience with but that one is it's pretty decent too uh, it just kind of depends on what your verse is really and that's another thing too is depending on the content like i said you may need to switch vocations as well maybe hero isn't is is the best uh vocation for certain content while dealing with magic is a better vocation for different content it just really depends so you really want to build up a well-rounded character nonetheless but if we take a look at the other characters here they also have their own uh vocations by default so as you see uh pop is going to be a mage here we have a hero here she's a sage so they have their own vocations ultimately you can't change what they're doing but if you wanted to have uh it kind of kind of really doesn't change but you can change the allies and maybe they'll have a different vocation but i don't think they change ever um okay so i talked about the level limits but how do you even get levels in the first place so levels on these vocations uh or the characters allies that you have also as you see have levels too they function the same with the board and all that stuff for the record uh, levels are gained by completing content now there are also equipments you can summon for from time to time that do boost as you see experience gain increases the user's experience gained by 11 percent um these typically come out every so often uh on their own banners and stuff like that pretty separate they don't have the best stat increases but they're really good for increasing levels and some of the weapons also increase accuracy which is very important when it comes to uh <laughs> new login which is very important when it comes to the actual content in the game that you're going to mainly be playing for leveling up and to show you that content let me go ahead and get past the login screen here Okay, so the main way you're going to be leveling up outside of just completing random or generic quests is in challenge quests. So challenge quest is also where you're going to get a lot of your resources uh, because in order to unlock those boards, you will need different materials, right? It'll tell you what you need, but you're going to come here and get whatever you need. And if you ever need something specific on that board, you can click and hold and it'll show you where to go, whether it's a story stage because story stages will drop this stuff too, which is why I put importance on completing story uh, and they will also um, be able to get exchanged in shops or things like that because some of the events we haven't talked about events yet they will have currencies uh so overall though here in growth trial is where you're going to be uh playing to get the most of your levels ultimately uh this is the main leveling level <laughs> pun intended where you fight metal slimes and if you know anything about metal slimes they are very 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 elusive and evasive so uh having the weapons increase accuracy is very very helpful in this stage because they will also increase experience uh but otherwise you can just play this content easily and not have to worry about it also from time to time particularly like right now during events like the anniversary they'll have these where you get a lot of experience for completing these types of quests they give you a ticket every day and there's a lot of resources tied into it hundred thousand there some skip tickets some other drops uh these are incredible they drop a lot of experience they're really easy to beat they go super fast that's a nice way to jump start your characters but i would recommend because they give so much experience i would recommend uh increasing your board level as quickly as possible to really take um the full effectiveness of that um so moving on from that let's talk about uh well we're kind of in events but events is where you're going to get a lot of your currency and also 
summon tickets. So I talked about the gotchas. I didn't really talk too much about uh, the, the currency, but obviously if you play any gotcha games, you know that currency is available in story and, and any events that you complete, stages you complete, like I showed earlier with the tracks and stuff like that for the story, you get the currency there. But in events uh, that coincide with uh, gotcha, which is basically always, they put these treasure keys and these are basically summon tickets that you can use uh one one of them for one summon right you can use these um on the gotcha and you can from there uh get a free summon so they typically give about 20 of them per per event or 20 per banner i think they gave 40 for this event and for for what's going on now because they had a die banner and a pop banner that coincided with this one event um also here in these events for exchanges or sometimes in drops for stages you complete you will get the opportunity to get some powerful equipment here as well and also weapons and again more materials you will need to improve your characters if you again if you ever need a specific piece click and hold it as you see here it'll show you where you, what, what stages you can go to or where you can exchange for it because you will need a lot of these jewels on a per character basis for example and it'll tell you where you need to go right when it comes to increasing the board levels so click and hold it'll tell you but more materials just for various reasons like improving characters or improving your weapons or whatever so basically yeah events are very very important and also in events it's mainly a pve based thing but they do have co-op towards the end and co-op does yield the most rewards typically if you can complete it uh so do play that and also when it comes to events whatever weapon they're giving you will typically have an extra trait for boost so what i mean is uh let's go ahead and come here we'll go to change equip i think i have it on my character right now as opposed to the new weapon yep this is the event that's the, the three-star weapon that's tied into this uh, die event that we're here with right now. And as you see, it says grants 50 extra tokens. And those tokens, again, are for exchanges in the exchange shop. So whenever you get those weapons, you want to, you know, power them up and then equip them and go from there. Uh, so moving on from the events here, let's talk about Hall of Perdition. Uh, it's content I don't play a lot of either. And it's just kind of kind of here, you know. Uh, but this is very important content this one actually just kind of came out yeah so this is very important content it's very end game hard content what happens here is as you complete these uh, i don't know if this one does yeah okay as you complete these uh you get drops like these and these trophies are very very impactful because as you see here uh traits raises users damage versus dragon enemies like for example this stage features a dragon enemy boss you know lowers damage taken from dragons and hp up this is extremely powerful oh my goodness <laughs> that's that's heavy power creep Hold on, that's heavy power creep. Let me show you some of the old, earlier ones. Like, let's show you the very first one. Let's look at this power creep here for just the resources. Oh my goodness. <laughs> look, look at this. Raises damage against beasts by less than the other, and then just resistances to faint. Like, that's pretty garbage comparatively. Um, so yeah, you get those, and they are very helpful in, in your, your events or your story stages. Because as you play any event, the, the, the bosses will have types. As you see here, it says type beast family and uh it'll tell you what those trophies that you equip and you can equip those in the change screen here you put them at the top uh yeah it'll tell you which one you want to use and you get the bonuses for that so just again going back to the point that you have to change your party or whatever based on the content you're playing so hall of perdition is very important admittedly i don't play it a ton but i should now let's move on from there and let's talk about battle arena i was actually when this came out I was really thinking this was going to be like some sort of PvP. That would be really fun in this game, uh, but there isn't PvP here. This is a ranking system, and with this ranking system, you get some more gems and rewards and stuff like that. Uh, I would recommend uh, completing it as much as possible for these battle medals. The battle medals are really useful for exchanges and stuff, but ultimately, as you go ahead and complete here, you get these different stages, right? And the higher your score, the better, because you ultimately at the end of the period, as you see on the ninth, the period is over here. You get rewards based on that. I need to go up. I haven't hit a stage completely yet. I've tried, but I got really close. I need to complete a stage so I don't get demoted. But that's how you play this content. Whenever you're available to just complete it and try to get a high, as high a score as possible. And they do, they give you different stipulations on what the scoring is based on, based on like efficiency and how many breaks you get and different things like that. Uh, there's a lot of explainer to it but it's very easy content to, to kind of handle now this is where i'm not really going to touch uh, too much on alliances because they don't they don't really matter in this game they don't do anything i don't even think you can like communicate with an alliance if you can i guess that's cool but they don't really do anything so here is your bonding halo 
bonding Halo is very, 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 very important because like I said in the beginning, the premise of this game is, uh, as the title even suggests, your bonds with these characters, right? So as you go ahead and use these characters and content, their bond level goes up. As you see, uh, there's different levels. There's their own like individual level, like this die is at 52 out of 60, but he has a bond level that's a little bit different. As you see here, it's level nine uh, underneath him right there. So they have their own levels and level 10 is the maximum. But as you go ahead and level up the bond on more and more characters, you get a total bond bonus. As you see at the very top, my total bond is level 175. And that's important because what happens is you get these extra stat increases at level 10 total bond, which is very uh, obviously very quick and easy to do. You just got to play basically again. Bond level is not something you you increase by playing the slime stage is different. The, that's the vocation level, right? Um, but the bond level is just from using them in events and playing with them. And it's basically like a friendship mechanic, if you will. That's really what it is. Um, but there's a lot and a lot and a lot of stats and resistances and stuff that are tied to this. So you would really, really want to complete this as quickly as possible. And it's on a per character basis. Like we got four moms here. Uh, we're getting what? 10, 20 close to 30 bonuses currently with my right now. Or I said my mom, excuse me. So it's on a per character basis and a per like outfit for each character, if that makes sense, right? But bonding Halo is very, very important. So let's from there move on. I wanted to touch on something uh, with the gotcha overall. I forgot to mention this, but it's very easy to do. And I'm gonna show you an example. Uh, well, it's not easy to complete, but this game does have a pity system. So that's right here at the bottom, the 74 out of 75 and 149 out of 150. So I'm going to show you an example of that right now, live in the video. And I showed, uh, it just pulled up two different currencies. We'll show that briefly as well. And then move on from the gotchas. Cause I meant to mention this earlier. Okay. So in the summon animation, if you get the gray slimes, that's very good. If you get the orange slime, it's kind of whatever. <laughs> just the blue one is the worst one by the way uh you don't want you really just want metal slimes okay so we got garbage here but that'll complete my pity so 75 out of 75 and then we got 150 out of 150 so here it's going to make me do the point treasure for the silver and this one will give me an increased uh chance at a higher drop i believe so let's go ahead and do this one here we got a metal perfect so let's see what we get if you, you really want to get the both metals by the way that'd be that that's incredible but I'm cool getting one because we're getting something here. All right, can I get the top piece? Ah, not even, not even one of the new weapons. Ugh. I actually just got this weapon too, like yesterday for the first time. Okay, well I got a duplicate. I guess it's a good segue. Uh, we'll talk about skills in a minute, I guess, because we need to talk about that. But basically, when you get a duplicate, the weapon. We'll talk about weapons in a second too. But the weapon uh, is usable to limit break other weapons, right? So let's go ahead and do my gold one. So the gold one is really powerful because it lets you select what you want. <laughs> so ultimately when you're done, when you've gotten deep in this banner and got p pity to oblivion, uh, by the time you get here, you'll have gotten two silver ones. I just did my second silver. Uh, and then when you get here, you get to choose what you want. I have two swords of bonds because I pulled a duplicate in my journey to finish this. Uh, and as you see here, I, I have two of the shields one of the bottoms and none of the tops. Now, I would typically, to be honest, I would typically recommend probably picking up another sword of bonds, but I'm gonna pick up the top just because I don't have this piece. Cool, so now we have it. So that's how pity works. Now, this game does have two currencies. So uh, there's red gems and blue gems. Blue gems are the free ones. You'll never earn red gems for free. And by extension, that doesn't mean that there will be paid only banners for the record. It, it is what it is. If you if you ever played a game with two currencies, there are going to be paid only banners. Uh, so moving on from that, let's go ahead and talk about upgrading. So here are skills and these are all the different skills that I have. Uh, and for the record, if you don't have a skill, it's typically tied to three star weapons for these silver ones. The special moves are going to be tied to four star weapons. Uh, and if you don't have a skill you can go to acquire and in which case you can exchange the for the scrolls to unlock the skills basically it just depends on what it is uh but we'll go to the exchange shop briefly to show you what i mean here but you can go to exchanges and in exchange if you uh if you want to unlock a specific skill assuming you have the currency needed you can unlock the skills by exchanging for them 
right? And this currency specifically is from selling like four star weapons or three star weapons. There's some armor ones and you see what I'm saying here. Also in, in other content, it's a little bit easier to get some of these skills too because they'll drop on some of the stages. It just really depends what you're going for. But as we go ahead and take a look at the skills here, like I was saying, you can upgrade skills uh, by using duplicate scrolls, right? So you saw when I did that pull for, for that weapon just a second ago and I got that weapon I had got before, that staff, it was a duplicate. I got five scrolls for that mom uh, skill. Now, let's actually pull that one up here because I can actually upgrade it. So you need five to be able to uh, upgrade to the first level. It does go up as you increase, but leveling is really, really powerful. At least this first one, they're all really good, but that first one's really good for a couple of reasons. Um, the reason why is because the charge required goes down drastically here. It recovers more and it starts off with full stock. And what I mean by that is these these, these weapons are on a, on a cooldown. Uh, so when you get that first dupe in, they pretty much don't have that cooldown anymore. So <laughs> it's very, very, very useful. Um, so yeah, you need those to go ahead and upgrade it. I have a few left over, as you see. I can't go anywhere with it. But you can get these uh, special scrolls from exchanges. And a lot of times you can get these scrolls too. I think this is the wrong one. Isn't this supposed to be gold or whatever? Anyways, you can get these scrolls from uh, the rank battle exchanges that we were just talking about a moment ago where you complete to get the high score and stuff, you can get those. But those are typically going to pertain to these weapons that are that are not uh, four star rarity. But you can increase these weapons and work on them as well in the same fashion. So that's basically how the, the skills go. Let's talk about equipment. So equipment, again, you can sell it and you'll get the corresponding item to exchange in the exchange shop. Very easy to understand. Very simple stuff like I talked about. Uh, so yeah, I would get 20 of those for that. Blah, blah. So... If we were to come here to upgrade, this is a cool system. Before the uh, last couple of months, um, damn it, I just remember they added one more thing I needed to talk about. There's a lot in this game, but we're going to bounce back to that in a minute. Before the last couple of months, you would need duplicates in order to uh, evolve weapons. And that's a very easy and simple process. This is a free weapon, by the way. But as you go ahead and evolve, you get to level up. It limit breaks a few times. Max level goes up. The traits get better, blah, blah. Very easy uh, general gacha stuff there. And you can also, here on this page, just increase the level to the maximum available to the weapon. But uh, they added in evolution ore for items or for, for, excuse me, equipment or weapons or whatever. So since I didn't grab that dupe of the, the die sword for the exchange a second ago, uh, for the pity, I mean for the summons. I have a dupe here that I'm sitting on, by the way, because it's nice to have a duplicate if you're going to use multiple of the same type of character. Like, I'm using a, another die on my team that needs a thunder weapon, so it's nice. But they added in these evolution ores that you can use to basically limit breaks for free. And these are free. You're not purchasing these. There's not a way to purchase these. You just have to complete content, albeit you have to complete hard content. <laughs> but you can limit break your weapons now for free. And this is really awesome. Again, this is a new feature of the last couple of months. This wasn't here at launch and it's very, very useful. So now I can increase the max level on this and obviously improve my weapon drastically. So that also works for, for the uh, armors and shields and stuff that you would have. You can do the same type of deal if you want to work on those pieces. Let's go ahead and uh, put one into this piece here. We just got it. So let's go for it. And boom, it's even better now. Now, as you go ahead and improve them, obviously, again, you will get uh, better traits and stuff. So let's upgrade that really quickly before we go. And speaking of upgrades, remember how I was telling you about the slime stage? Uh, in the anniversary on that slime stage, they added in books. <laughs> this is brand new. That's why I completely forgot about it. So they added in books here and books allow you to train characters naturally. This wasn't a thing before, but if you go to bonding halo, this is very nice, by the way, uh, so you don't have to only rely on basically, you know, training when they dictate, basically. Uh, if you go to Bonding Halo, and we're going to go to, let's go to the new die, and we'll hit Upgrade. And here you can use these, uh, well, scrolls, I guess they're calling them. I can't really do it now because he's at max level. But you can use these, and it will give you levels overall on character. I would recommend, you again, having your, your level limit unlocked so you get the most effectiveness out of them. But if we go here and we choose you, because I'm pretty sure you shouldn't be done. Yeah. So you can get some experience off these as well. So that's another way to train your characters up. And that's, again, that's a brand new feature. So we've talked about 
largely everything that's in the game right now um so i talked briefly about soul crystals right so soul crystals can uh they can limit break uh they can they can use duplicates of their own to increase their max uh, rank and stuff like that your your max stars like there's a, it's a it's a very easy system to understand once you start messing with it but the general premise of this is if we come here and we select my hero vocation these are ones that i equipped and you can see the effects they're giving me here extra stats or extra guard gauge or things like that so you get uh the benefits of this overall and as the the uh souls here are higher level the resonance boost increases which again is better off for you so very uh very generic stuff so the last thing i want to kind of the last few things i want to kind of talk about is heart's light this is a new um event that was added here as part of the anniversary i don't know how often this will pop up but it's really really cool because it basically as more people play and complete events we all start getting more rewards so that's really awesome too so just try to complete as much content as possible again i don't know how often it'll be here it seems like it's a very special thing they'll probably only do uh, for big e events or whatever or if it's there often it'll probably lead to uh <laughs> less rewards overall that's typically how those things kind of go before we end here i want to see if there's anything else we didn't talk about we touched on story uh we talked about the events we talked about battle arena joining room is for co-op we talked about the bonding halo we talked about equipment um we talked about skills boards trophies and soul crystals and we talked about how to get some of these things as well so the shop is just for purchasing <laughs> uh, currency if you want to do that uh items and exchange items is very just it's, you just see kind of your inventory i guess uh so the following items have been discarded okay yeah these are all I, you never have to come here but these are all event tickets or whatever you never have to really come here but you can just see your inventory of what you have uh let's go ahead and come out and we take a look at communication there's a friend system if you want to do that the friend system is cool because you can join in co-op not really much else there to do though like i said alliances and all that stuff exists but that's pretty much it uh, i feel like we touched on basically everything in the game so overall to run down that was the explainer for everything in the game you're going to want to focus on story completing that first then you're going to want to work on leveling up your characters increasing their vocations and then as you increase their vocations uh levels and stuff they will get stronger obviously they'll also unlock new passive skills on the boards that's available to them they will also uh, uh what's it called be able to allow you to complete harder content which would then funnel into being able to get better resources like those evolution ores from exchange shops and you'll be able to improve your characters and in your your overall roster so long video i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did hit that thumbs up and subscribe and i'll see you all in the next one take it easy everybody